Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gen 5 uh, Glock 19. Uh, I don't own this gun. I borrowed it from Michelle up at Moss Pond. She was nice enough to let us take a new gun out. Uh, we're going to take this thing and just literally, I've never shot it. We're going to pull it right out of the box and we're just going to see what it's all about and uh, get some initial impressions on the gun. And uh, I do want to mention something real quick before we start this video on the Gen 5 here is that when we made our initial Glock 43 video, I want to make it clear to everybody that there were some things about that video that Glock didn't like, and they tried to strong arm us to get us to pull that video down. And I just want to make it clear that I'm making this video for my viewers that care about this gun. And yes, I like Glocks, and yes, I think this is probably going to be a pretty cool gun, but I just want to put that out there, that there seems to be a lot of confusion with people about who we work for and what we do, and I just want to let everybody know, in case it wasn't known, that my honor and integrity is to my viewers. And I would not bend to Glock's will and pull that video because it didn't meet their mantra of perfection. So that's why we're going to pull this gun right out of the box. We've never shot it. And we're going to take you guys along, just like we always do and we always have. And we're going to see what this dang gun's about. And that's just the bottom line. That's what we're going to do. And so we're going to pull it out of the box. Now, um, there's a lot of things about the Gen 5. They, they have made some changes. So since this gun's never been fired, I'm just going to swab the barrel, make sure there's no preservatives inside the barrel. Okay. They did change the barrel. That's one thing I noticed already before I've even shot the gun. Uh, the new barrels now have like a button style, more traditional uh, rifling in them uh, versus the older guns having more of a polygonal uh, style rifling. One thing I noticed before I've even shot the gun is there's some definite uh, holstering cuts that are very, very deliberate on the front of the slide that have been made. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's something that's slightly different. Uh, there's also a sear bump that they've added on this gun where it won't accept an auto sear without having to be machined down. So that's one thing that's different. You can't put one of those uh, Glock auto sears in this thing. So it looks like a meltdown is not going to be uh, in the future for this particular gun. Uh, without have, having to actually manufacture this pistol as a machine gun, that's not going to happen. The back plate's different. Uh, you know, it kind of retains like the, the Gen 4, you know, grip inserts and everything like that. You got a mag loader, a cleaning rod, a cleaning brush, a trigger lock. I don't know why anybody would want that. Another thing that they did change on this gun as well is the slide stop is definitely more robust and they've, they've changed a little bit of the geometry on the slide stop and the slide stop is completely ambidextrous. So that's something that's pretty cool there. Uh, it's got a very large and deliberate magazine release. The magazine well appears to have a pretty deliberate flaring to it. Uh, I do like the way the gun fits my hand to a degree. Uh, we are going to go ahead and shoot it. I've never shot this gun before. I've got quite a few Gen 3 19s. Uh, you guys know if you've watched the channel that 19s are definitely one of those guns that we've always been a pretty good fan of. I mean, I like Glock pistols. Don't have anything against them. We got a variety of ammunition that we're just going to try out through the gun. Uh, the gun does come with three magazines. The followers on the magazines are updated to like an orange follower, and I'm assuming that's probably for safety uh, or something like that. So if you know that the mag is empty or something like that. Anyway, we're going to have a look. We got some uh, American Eagle 124 grain FMJ. That's going to be the first load we test. All right, first shots through the gun. Let's just have a little fun here. Run it. Freedom Munitions, 124 grain ball ammo. You sure this isn't a meltdown? Huh? I said, you sure this isn't a meltdown? I'm sure it's not a meltdown. <laughs>
Not bad. That worked. PMC 115 grain full metal jacket. And these are 15 shot mags, by the way, guys. Alright, one thing that I want to make note of is the fact that now, now that the barrel is uh, not a polygonal barrel anymore and they're running with a more traditional style of barrel, I don't own this gun. I might buy one. I don't really you know, know what I want to do uh, yet. I haven't really developed an opinion about it. But if I did buy one of these guns, I think it'd be cool to try casting some ammo for it. Uh, because you know the cast ammo tends to do a lot better well i should i should go back on my statement and say that the polygonal rifling doesn't tend to do quite as well with cast ammo so i see this being a potentially a good cast bullet launcher and some of you guys that reload like i do or if you cast your own projectiles kind of a really cool way to be able to um, shoot cheaper so that might be possibly something that matters to people um the recoil impulse and the way the gun shoots and everything like that is pretty much everything that I've come to expect out of any 19. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a little jaded on something like this because the thing is, I already own a bunch of Gen 3 19s and that's kind of my go-to uh, pistol for really just a wide variety of different things. I mean, I already own, I think, four Gen 3 19s. Three of them are Nivixed. I've got a Gen 3 Glock 26. Um, I mean, and I'm perfectly happy with them. Uh, when the Gen 4 came out, I didn't really see a major need to really just rush out and go buy a Gen 4, and I wasn't really grossly happy with the features of the Gen 4. And then when I heard the Gen 5 came out, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. Now, if somebody's looking into Glock just as, a, as an initial kind of thing, and like they've never bought a Glock or they've never owned a Glock, this Glock would be just as good to own as any other Glock. Uh, I guess it really just depends on what your overall purpose is for the gun. Some people really might like the ambidextrous uh, slide stop as being an option. Um, I did hear that they've tried to change the finish process a little bit. That was one complaint that we had on a lot, especially the Glock 42 and the Glock 43. Guys, the finish on those guns suck. All right, I don't know any other way to explain it. Sucks. But the finish is not good, okay? The early guns have such a good wrap for, for holding up so well in terms of their finish because the tenifer finish. I believe this is more of a melaniting. I think at one point they went to like kind of a black oxiding uh, finish and that's what was on the Glock 42s and the Glock 43s and it sucks. Okay. I, I hate to say it, but it does. I mean, it is what it is, guys. It just, this finish is not good. This is more of a, I, I don't know if it would be considered a melaniting, but it's closer to melaniting than it is black, black oxide and time will tell how that finish holds up and everything like that. I think that the whole tenifer thing, the reason that these guns aren't finished tenifer anymore, I think it's an EPA thing. I think what it ended up being was because of the EPA and because of some type of environmental regulation that they have to adhere to, it's illegal to use tenifer on a gun now in, in, in the United States. I, I don't, maybe you guys can fact check me on that, but I heard that's why that they don't use that finish anymore is because of EPA regulations and things like that. Certain types of finishes just can't be applied here because of environmental concerns. Take that for what you will, uh, but it is what it is. Another thing, you know, and, and this may not be something that really matters to anybody, but to me, I find it to be kind of a, a, a thing. I mean, an auto seer, like a, uh, you know, a full auto Glock auto seer or something like that. Like, say you want to if you're an, an SOT or manufacturer and you want and you have an auto sear and you want to use a Glock as a host gun, you can't just drop an auto sear in this gun. You have to physically machine the slide in order to get an auto sear to work in this gun. Now, does that mean that they couldn't make a, a Gen 5 auto sear? I'm sure they could, okay? But I find it to be maybe just a little bit problematic that it's almost like engineered uh, shenanigans in a way. And, and, and it could just be the fact that they changed some things about the gun that required that, that geometry to change a little bit. Uh, there are some, some internal differences uh, between the older gen of gun and the new gen five. 
Um, you know, I, I like the way it fits my hand okay, but then again, I, I've never really had a concern about Glocks ever in terms of how they fit my hand. And that's gonna be different for each person. We'll talk a little bit more, but I'm gonna shoot some more. We got some more ammo to try out. So far it's working. All right, we've got an SGM Tactical 33 round magazine loaded up with some Federal Syntec. This is their synthetic jacket, 115 grain. Basically powder coated bullets, guys, is what we're dealing with here. And this is uh, American Eagle. We'll I wouldn't see how it consider works. the accuracy to be stellar at this point. What's that? I said I wouldn't consider the accuracy to be stellar at this point. Well, they're, they're claiming that these barrels are supposed to provide a little bit better accuracy. And uh, to be fair, guys, I've, I haven't been behind a Glock in a minute, so it could mm -hmm. be me. Just take it for what you will. Just trying to take my time, guys. I mean, that's not terrible accuracy right there. Certainly good enough for a defensive unit, mm -hmm. which uh, to me, a 19 is a pretty good defensive uh, handgun. I've, you guys know that I like 19s. I pulled those two. You can smell that jacket material. Like it's got a strange odor to it, but it's supposed to keep the barrel cleaner and all from what I understand, right? Yeah, I agree. Interesting. Mm. I'm just over here breathing in fumes. Yeah, let's see. Get it out of there. Yeah. A little hot. <laughs> Just a, a tiny bit hot. <laughs> Just a little warm. It's got a little bit of fallout in the barrel, but I wouldn't yeah. say anything uh, to be unexpected. Guys, the whole point of polygonal rifling, and I suppose, and I'm not, I'm not making this claim for Glock or against Glock or anything, but the point of polygonal rifling is that it's supposed to increase velocity because it's lower drag, lower friction. And if you take two identical rounds and shoot one round out of a standard button rifle barrel and then one round out of a polygonal barrel, in theory, the polygonal barrel should provide higher velocity round to round. Just to, it really depends on what that hull hoopla law is really worth to you. It's either important or it's not. Me personally, I don't really care either way. I would prefer a barrel that maybe has a little bit more usefulness to it, but I've never made a purchase or decision on a gun based on, oh, well, this one has a standard barrel in it, this one has a polygonal barrel. It's just a difference in how the guns are made. That's really all it is. Take it with a grain of salt, guys. I mean, it just is what it is. Well, you know, like when I first bought a Glock several years back, a Gen 3, you know, I had to buy like a lone wolf barrel just so I could run cast ammunition out of it. That's right. So, I mean, it's, when's the last time you cast nine millimeter? It's been a while. Right. I cast 45 gap. Okay. Ar Arms core, 147 grain subsonic, full power subsonic FMJ. Factory 33 round Glock magazine. The gun's not shooting terrible. Um, I don't really think it's the gun. I think it's just me. This gun will probably shoot a heck of a lot better than I can, am capable of shooting. All right. Well, it's having its moments. 
I'm it getting is. some some nice kind of clusters of shots there, but I'm just not shooting this gun super consistently, but the gun is showing some some promise for accuracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not bad. I honestly, I don't think it's bad at all. I really don't. I'm considering that we haven't shot handguns in what a month. I mean it is what it I mean the bottom line is guys, I'm not the kind of pistol shooter that is concerned about like tiny little groups. You know what I mean? Like I can bench rest this gun and I could probably get a lot better accuracy. I'm more concerned about what I can pick the gun up and do. And if, if we're talking a defensive situation and it's my life or theirs, I haven't missed with this gun yet. Who cares? I mean, that's, that's my thing. I mean, it is what it is, guys. All right, uh, we have some defensive ammo loaded up. We're gonna try, all the ammo we've been shooting has been ball. We're gonna try some full or, uh, expanding ammo here. We've got some 147 grain HST here from Federal that we're gonna be uh, trying out. 15 shot mag, we got some sodas down there, watermelon. Uh, we're just gonna engage those uh, fleshy items down there and see what happens. Maybe I can hit them. It's not gonna be good, whatever it is. Okay. Whoa. You had to talk about missing. I mean, the thing is, that's not a shot you're going to take in a defensive situation anyway. Heck no. You're not going to be rushed at 20 yards by soda bottles. You're going to be rushed at, at 6 yards by this guy right here. All right. Now this is kind of fun here. We've got we've got some Piney Mountain Tracer ammo. And the point of running this is one, it's tracers. What's not to like about that? But two, it's one of those things where this is kind of like non-standard, weird kind of ammo. So let's just see how it runs some oddball stuff. Hopefully we don't catch anything on fire. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I mean, at, that's fine too, but anyway. Here we go, tracers. Well, those three kind of like whipped out of there. Did you see that? <laughs> I did. They did. That was nuts. <laughs> but but here's the thing. That gong's 30 yards away, and I put most of those shots into the size of a pie plate. What else does a dang gun need to do, as far as I'm concerned? That's not too terrible. And there's a look at those mag followers that we couldn't show you earlier. They're orange. Uh, but there's still a metal line magazine. It still says Glock and all that, I guess. Um, but that seems to be the only major change that they've made to the magazine itself is the follower. Um, so we're a few rounds in here. You know, I, I think it's pretty cool. Guys, it's just a dang Glock. Okay, it's a Glock. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. All Glock has done is made the same gun over and over and over again with tiny little differences between them. Oh, let's change the caliber. Oh, let's make them a little bigger, a little smaller. But at the end of the day, it's a Glock. You either like Glocks or you don't. I personally am, am not like very much in love with the trigger on these guns. However, I do see the, the combat effectiveness of them and the utilitarian nature of a Glock. And I think that that's what I appeal to a little bit more with a Glock pistol than I do anything else. I personally find the MMPs to be a little bit more fun to shoot. And with the more rigid frame, I, I feel like they're a little more accurate for me, okay? But everybody's different. 
I think the Glock is, it makes a good utilitarian gun uh, that can serve a lot of folks uh, when, when they need something the most. A Glock is certainly a gun that you can depend on. I mean, you see this thing is eating everything we can throw in it with every mag, with every round. It hasn't had a single problem. If it did, guys, you'd see it. So it's just the thing is, it's cool. It works. If you don't own a Glock and you want something that's, I guess, the newest thing they make and you're not concerned about running auto sear in it, then who gives a crap? If you like it, buy it. If, it's, if that's your thing, whatever, who cares? Um, me personally, I mean, from my perspective, I already own a lot of Glocks, so I probably wouldn't really see much of a point in getting one of these just for the sake of, oh, I have a Gen 5. I mean, maybe there's some people out there that are kind of along the lines of, you know, they collect guns or whatever, or they collect modern guns. Uh, to me, the, a gun like this definitely fits into like kind of the tool category. It's a tool. It's a tool. That's all it is. And I, I missed a few times, but for the most part, I hit everything I was aiming at and everything I wanted to hit and generally the spot I wanted to hit it. I can't really think of anything else a gun needs to do. Uh, we're going to get Chad's opinion, let him have a go on it and, uh, and just see what the little gun can do. Chad shoots a Glock a lot better than I do. In fact, I would say Chad shoots handguns a lot better than I do. I don't know about all that. I, I'm more of a I'm more of a wheel gun guy. You know, I like revolvers and things like that. In terms of going out and just shooting and having fun. Now, now don't get me wrong. I mean, I carry a shield on my side all the time. Uh, Chad carries his Glock 42 still. 43. Um, 43. I'm sorry. I <laughs> I, I think I, we got Brandy a 42. Mm -hmm. And did did Mindy get a 42? No, I got her 43. 43. Okay, so mm -hmm. y'all have a pair of 43s. Brandy has 42, mm -hmm. and then I carry the shield. I'm the only evil one out of the bunch. Yeah, I have to be the rabble rouser and carry the shield. But the rebel. But the thing is, though, Glocks are cool. You know, guys, it's a proven gun. People like them. Everybody can draw their own opinion about what they think about this. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna let Chad have a go. Um, don't get me wrong. If it came down to it, my life depended on it. I would trust my life to a Glock any day. All right, guys. I'm gonna take a few shots with the uh, Gen 5 Glock here, and you know, like Eric said, I mean. It's kind of uneventful. Like Eric, I own several Glocks. I own mostly Gen 3s uh, and older ones. Um, I don't really own any modern Gen 3s. I don't own a single Gen 4. Um, I do own the 243s. And, you know, one of those we sent to Robar, and they basically dressed that thing up and put their, you know, awesome finish on it and everything and the MP3 Plus code and all the internals. So I don't have a problem with the finish on that gun anymore, but my wife's gun is still stock. And if I don't keep that thing oiled, that black oxide crap, it just rusts like a scone. And, you know, I hope that the finish on these guns holds up much better than the previous models um, because that's one big complaint that I did have for sure. So we're just going to shoot it and see how I do with it. I am more of a Glock guy than Eric is in the big scheme of things, but like we said, we do own several of these guns because, I mean, bottom line is they work. They work great. So let's see what I can do here. I've got uh, some American Eagle. Uh, this is the 124 grain stuff. I'm basically going to shoot a lot of the same ammo that Eric did and just see how, see how it performs. Never shot this gun before. Plenty good for a defensive pistol in my book. I mean, that's a 10 inch plate at eh, 15 yards. That's about a six inch group, give or take. You know, not really trying too hard. Not bench resting this thing and all that mess. All right, so we got some of the Freedom Munitions 124 grain. Oh no, pull that one to the left. <laughs> That's a six inch plate at about 20 yards. You gonna load some mags for me? I am. All right. We're just gonna melt this thing down a little bit and see what happens. It was already warm when I picked it up, so. All right, uh, PMC bronze. Let's shoot this D28 here on the bolt here. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going for a headshot.
You know, that ammo is actually pretty consistent. It is very, I did pull that one shot. I was just kind of fondling the trigger a little bit and uh, just checking the reset and everything on there. The trigger is just like a regular Glock trigger. I mean, there's really nothing special about it. I do notice that the, the trigger bow itself is smooth. It doesn't have those little ridges cut in it like some of the other uh, previous models do. I like the feel of that a lot better. It doesn't cut into your hand. And also the little safety, uh, the safety lever there is kind of radiused. Some of the older models, they would have like these sharp edges on there, which were just a little bit uncomfortable. But all right, so is that some more of the freedom there? Uh, yeah, whatever okay. the box is on is what it is. 10-4, let's take out some sodi pops. All right, let me take my time here. Right on the top. There we go. Not bad. Gopher. I mean, this gun has eaten everything we've thrown in it so far. And we're going to keep shooting. And, dude, it's running great. All right, so this is some of the um, 147 grain Freedom Munitions Pro Match. It's uh, kind of a hollow point projectile. Let's see if this stuff's any more accurate. I'm going to shoot one of these 10-inch uh, plates over here on the left. <clears throat> Let's see. Well, you yeah, got to be able to shoot better than I do. <laughs> About 15 <laughs> yards. Not bad. Now let's see. I'm going to try to. All right. Let's break out the big stick. You didn't look at that. <laughs> I couldn't do that again if I ever tried. Ah. Blah! Oh, oh, just a few <laughs> seconds to unload them take me forever to load them. <laughs> I'm just going to wrap him out of here and Keep see what shooting, happens. Keep shooting, dude. Even with the, the flared magwell and stuff on there, this thing's still kind of riding up in my hand a little bit. I almost like that RTF grip a little bit better or like a stippled grip like I did on my, uh, my Glock 17 that we did the meltdown on. I think I'd probably stipple the grip if it was mine just personally for carry and stuff like that, but... Not bad at all. All right, let's try some headshots back there on those D28s. Well, so much for that idea. All right, try some more of the pro match. I'm gonna get my headshots now. So, 20 yards, four inch target. I mean, let's try it's that not again. not terrible. The gun's accurate. I'm, it's it's not bad at all. All right, let's try our little uh, say it all little popper back there. He's uh, give or take about thirty yards away. Let's see, I don't know where it's hitting at that range. Oh, okay. Well, all right, we are getting it pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, it's dude, it's <laughs> it's. Steaming. There's Mirage coming off of the slide here. It's Keep hot. shooting it's the dang thing. Keep shooting it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So Sorry, inch. Michelle. We're we're ruining your gun. <laughs> it's going to be slightly used when we bring it back. <laughs> there you go. I mean, it's not a match gun, but if you take your time with it, that's 30 yards away on a six inch plate. This ammo shoots exceptionally well. It does. Ooh, ooh, ah, it's really all ah. we have left. I shot up all the hodgepodge of stuff I brought. <laughs> oh, there's some more in the back of my truck. We got plenty of nine. Okay. Keep shooting. All right, 35 yards. All right, that thing's hitting like six inches high at 35 yards. Let's see. Let me bullseye it. Uh, 
about 40 yards. Seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> Not the highway either. <laughs> I'll take it all day. I don't know. I may have to buy one of these things. <laughs> All right, Sintec. Good grief. He hasn't skipped a beat yet, has it? <laughs> ah! Trying to get on that reset. <laughs> hey, how about tag team wrestling? Here, I'm coming. <laughs> Coming. Oh, 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 uh, tag. Oh. <laughs> I'm back here loading mags. I'm not getting to shoot. <laughs> well, you didn't shoot enough. You talked too much. I know, I know. You sure this isn't turning into a meltdown video? We're out of ammo. Oh, are we? <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 wait. There's gotta be some. We're out of ammo. No, we're not. Look, look, look. <laughs> look here's a few rounds everywhere. Guys, here, here, here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Shoot it real quick. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me have it. Look at this. <laughs> Good God. All right, here we go. <laughs> you just had to get in there and redeem yourself. That's all it was. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Not bad. Eh, whatever. I okay. Have to, I have to say that I like it. <laughs> I mean, would I buy one with, with all the Glocks that I currently own and use? Probably not, um, but I, I think it would be a good option for somebody. But who it's a Glock. To, I think it'd be a good option for somebody who wants to, you know, cast bullets and have the option without having to spend an extra hundred bucks on another barrel. Yeah. You know, that's one one good feature too. And the bull nose on the slide, I mean, it's got some good features to it for sure. And the thing did not skip a beat, but I mean, hardly any Glock that we've ever shot skipped a beat at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I would say, uh, I would say it gets a seal of approval. I'd say so. I'd say it's combat worthy for sure. Um, but then again, when is when is a Glock never really been not combat worthy? I mean, they're the most unisex looking things in the world. They're ugly. They don't really fit your hand all that great. Uh, they they fit everyone's hand marginally and no no one person's hand exceptionally well. Like no. they just <laughs> it's just a generic fit. You know what I mean? And they've tried to get around that with the interchangeable back strap. So to be fair, that's kind of cool to kind of add that little bit of modularity to the gun for those that need it. Um, but hey, not bad. I think it's pretty cool. So guys, uh, thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you saw the uh, performance of the gun. I mean, you guys saw it here along with us. We just roll the camera and go for it. And guys, that's how we make all of our videos. If there's an issue, you're gonna know it, trust me. We don't play around when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, we take this sort of stuff pretty dang seriously, um, especially handgun reviews because, and I really even hate to say review because I, I don't even consider this a review. It's just more of a, hey, we're just taking this thing out and shooting it and you guys are just watching us do it. Um, but we do take this stuff seriously because I know how important uh, these types of things can be for people, not only to kind of learn about products, but also to kind of see what we think about it. Guys, thank you for watching today's video. We graciously appreciate everybody's support. Uh, thank you, Michelle, for letting us borrow this gun. We don't own this gun. They didn't have to let us do that. Um, it's a used gun now. <laughs> and maybe I can get it cheaper now that it's used. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, thank you, Michelle, for uh, letting me borrow this gun for the uh, video here. Guys, thank you so much for your support on Patreon, your support of Man Cans, and all of the uh, great contributions you make to our channel just by watching and by commenting and sharing your ideas with the world. That's what this whole platform is about, and I graciously appreciate all of you that watch our videos. Thank you very much. Have a good day.